Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Heidi from My Reading Life and I'm here today to review what I've read over the past week and what I'm currently reading. So I didn't do a Shorty September vlog this weekend like I've done um, the past couple of weekends, but I did want to talk through what I've completed because I did finish three books in the past week um, since I last posted and I'm currently reading three more. So I figured I might as well just film a recent and current reads video. So the first book that I completed in the last week is another book for Shorty September. And that book was an ebook that I read on my Kindle and it's Leonard and Hungry Paul by Ronan Hessian. And this is a book that I first heard about from um, Sean the Book Maniac, who's had this author on his channel several times. And then um, I got really interested in the book because I heard Brian over at Bookish rave about it. So I, Picked it up as a ebook, and I at last week was really stressful after the tropical storm blew through and we had no power for over three days. Um, so I wanted something that was comforting and sort of um, warm hearted <laughs> to read without a lot of stakes. And I thought that from what I had heard, Leonard and Hungry Paul would fit the bill, and it did. It's just this really lovely story about two men who are sort of, you know, past their young adulthood, but not quite into middle age. Uh, Leonard and Hungry Paul are the two guys and they are like best friends. Um, they get together in the evenings and on the weekends and they play board games and they just chat and they just have a very lovely relationship. As the book opens, we, um, we sort of get chapters back and forth from each of their perspectives. And Leonard has been, Leonard who lives with his mom, um, has just recently lost her. She has passed away. And so he's adjusting to life, living on his own in the house by himself and what this this means for his life going forward. Now, Hungry Paul still lives at home with his, his parents um, and he has an older sister who is on the brink of getting married. And so his big sister's wedding plays a big role in the story. And we're following these two men as they sort of navigate their lives with, you know, just they both are very comfortable with the lives that they're leaving, but society has a lot of expectations for people, you know, about what your career should be and what you should be doing to advance yourself and what the next step should be in your life as far as family and partners and all that kind of stuff. And Leonard and Hungry Paul don't understand why everybody has sex, such expectations on them. Um, but over the course of the story, some things do change for Leonard and Hungry Paul, and it's just lovely. It's just a warm hug of a story. There aren't big stakes here. It's really a, a book about people and how people interact with each other and how we might all just get along a lot better if we all just accepted each other for who we are. And I just thought it was lovely and I really enjoyed my time spent with the book. So that was another shorty for Shorty September. It was a little bit longer than 200 pages. I think it was like 240 pages, but it reads really quickly and I thought it was delightful. So then the next thing I completed was another nonfiction. This is Silent Earth, Adverting the Insect Apocalypse by Dave Goulson. This is a book I picked up in the spring when I was in Heathrow Airport and I picked it. I wanted to read some Dave Golston because Doris over at Aldi Books has raved about his science writing and he focuses a lot on insects. That's where his research takes him is about insects. And so this book is all about insects, why their numbers are on steep decline around the world, what are the uh, causes of those declines, how humans are impacting uh, populations of insects around the world through their actions. And then at the end is what can we do about it? So there's at the end of this book, there is information about what individuals can do, what communities can do, what local governments can do, what national governments can do, what global governments can do. Um, and so I thought the book ends with a lot of hopeful notes and action items that you can take. Uh, but the first part of the book is quite depressing and quite a bummer when you realize just the sheer numbers of insects that we've already lost, um, that we continue to lose day after day, and most of which we don't even notice because we never really knew about them in the first place. But there's lots of really great information in here about individual insects, some really cool facts about insects, 
I thought this was great. I think Dave Goulson has a fabulous popular science writing voice. I went back and forth between reading this in the hard copy and listening to it on audiobook, and I can certainly recommend um, both formats. Uh, the book does have like graphs and maps and that sort of thing uh, throughout. So it was nice to have the physical copy to sort of flip back and forth and also footnotes um, that provided more information. So I would say definitely have the physical copy to refer to uh, if you're going to try the audiobook. But Dave Goulson does read the audiobook himself and he does a very nice job with that. And then I just today uh, finished another shorty for the month and that was a romance uh, novella that I read with my romance buddy readers Doris and Katie and it was Can't Escape Love by Alyssa Cole uh, which is a novella in the Reluctant Royals series. I guess it's 2.6 in the Reluctant Royals series and I have read some of the full-length novels in that series. Um, I listened to this on audiobook from Scribd and I, it was awesome. It was such a good story. I thought it was really cute. It's a modern day story. So it's contemporary. It takes place in current times. Um, our main female protagonist is a, um, she runs a website for uh, fandom for like some kind of, it's called Nerdy Girls with Glasses or something like that. So it's a website that's run for, for people who like um, sort of nerd type uh, culture, whether that's anime, video games, um, Comic-Con type things. And um, the main male protagonist is uh, a man who is really into puzzles. And he had run a uh, uh, YouTube channel where he did live streams of him solving puzzles and just talked. And she was his only viewer <laughs> when he ran that. And they got to know each other over that uh, context and she got really attached to his voice to the point where his voice was the only thing that would allow her to fall asleep when she was stressed out. So plot ensues from there um, and some happy coincidences happen and our two two folks meet in real life um, and this book sort of is really um, specifically and particularly hitting a lot of check boxes in terms of diversity uh, there's um there is disability representation there is racial representation there is um all different sorts of representation in here and at some points i did feel it was a little heavy-handed on the messaging um but overall i really enjoyed the cute story and you know sometimes i feel like with romance novels it's hard for the story to develop in such a quick time period but i thought that this one developed very believably um, and there was a lot of fun stuff. I didn't understand all the references, the pop culture references, uh, but I thought they were fun and very modern um, and just another really lovely story. And I really enjoyed the time that I spent with it. Um, so yeah, I would definitely recommend that if you're into contemporary stories. Um, I don't think you need to read anything else in the Reluctant Royal series because I've read, like I said, I've read some of the full length novels and this one to my knowledge didn't really, I mean, it's very peripherally. <laughs> Uh, associated with those other books. So you don't need to have read any of the other ones to jump in with um, Can Escape Love. So what am I currently reading? Oh, before we get into that, I wanted to give you a total of the number of shorties that I have read for the month so far. So I've read a total of 17 short books in the month so far, which out of a total of 21 books read total, uh, which is fantastic for me. Like I did not expect to have read this many books. Of course, there has been some things that have happened previously in the month that have caused me to have more reading time than I would normally have. So yay for me. I've read 21 books total so far. 17 of those have been shorties. And so I feel very, very accomplished when it comes to Shorty September this year. Now, the books I'm going to tell you about that I'm currently reading, only one of which qualifies as a shorty. But Let's talk about that one first, shall we? Since it does qualify for the reading theme for the month. And that is Every Day the River Changes, Four Weeks Down the Magdalena with um, by Jordan Sal Salama. And this is the book Naturalist Book Club pick for the month of September. So I am about halfway through this book. It is uh, the author's description of traveling down this river system in the country of Colombia in South America. And he um, is, this is when he's, I mean, this book, he's just, this just, this book just came out recently. Um, 
let's see, it was published in 2021 and he is a very young man. And so he is traveling down this river system and sort of encountering different cultures in different places for the first time. And it's, so it's a travel log, nature writing, that sort of thing. And that's all I'm gonna say about it because I will be doing a standalone review of this when I finish uh, by the end of the month for the Book Naturalist book club. But this is the pick for the month so far, halfway through enjoying my time with this book. I am also reading another science book, A World on the Wing, The Global Odyssey of Migratory Birds by Scott Wendensell. And the reason why I picked this up, I've had this one on the TBR for a while. It was sent to me by Stephanie over at Time to Read. Thanks again, Steph. She had read it um, a while ago, I think for the Book Two Prize and did not care for it as evidenced by her annotations in the margins. But um, this author, is going to be coming to my area to give a talk. And um, I'm not gonna be able to go in person, but I'm planning to listen to it over Zoom. So, and that is on October 2nd. So I wanted to pick this up and get started on it so that I would have read it before his talk. And I'm about 100 pages into this 300 page um, book. And I'm, again, a combination of audio booking it and reading the physical because there's nice maps in here and other things that I don't wanna miss. So I'm flipping back and forth and enjoying this one as well. Um, sorry, Stephanie, I'm really liking it so far, but it is much more my type of thing than yours, I think. And then the last thing that I'm currently reading is a book that I'm buddy reading with Britta Buller, and it is Silk Roads, A New History of the World by Peter Frankopan. This is definitely not a shorty. It's, over, it's well over 600 pages, 675 pages long. I'm reading it as an ebook uh, on my Kindle, and it is just what it says. It's a history of the Silk Roads um, from the very earliest development of them. And it really centers, it really shows how that Europe is not the center of the universe when it comes to global history. It talks a lot about um, how Asia was really the it place in early human history that all the things that were happening, the happening stuff was happening in Asia. And that we, with our Western perspective, have sort of centered everything around um, develop, developments that happened in Europe, particularly from like the 1400s on. But before that time period, all the, all the shit was happening in Asia. So, and he's doing a great job of laying out his case for that. Um, I have learned so much from this book already. We're about halfway through it. Um, and I've learned so much already and made so many connections for things that like different uh, events that happened in history that I had never put together the way that he's putting them together. So I think it's fantastic. It's very um, accessible in terms of a history nonfiction, I think. I think he does a really fantastic job. So very much enjoying that. So obviously not a shorty, uh, but something that I'm very much enjoying. So that's what I'm currently reading. I don't know if I will pick anything else up for the rest of this week. We're almost at the end of September. Um, I can't believe it, but it's been a great reading month so far. I'm really pleased with my progress. Uh, I hope that you have all been finding some great books to read and I will talk to you later.